I sat down with the idea of I'm never seeing this money again. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just here for the free drinks. Yep. I went back to 21-year-old mentality instead of realizing that Michelob Ultra is four bucks. You can just buy it. Like, you don't have to <laughs> You don't have to slam them, you know? But I was like, well, they're taking my money. I got to get something for it. Yeah, yeah. Two Michelob Ultras, whiskey and a Coke. What do you want? You want something? Drinking heavier, traveling light. There's one thing that's right wherever I go. That's where I am. What's up, everybody? What am I doing with my arms? This is how you start a podcast. Uh, this is my podcast. This is called This Week in Zoltan. This is episode, uh, would I say 373 or 273? I have no three. idea. Three. Let's go with three. Who cares? Uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter? Is there anyone? I would love, you know how like... Uh, Star Trek fans have super nerds where, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they're like, oh, in episode five, you said this, but in episode six, you had two heads. And then they like decipher, like decipher. I don't think anyone's doing that with this show. I think it's, I think it's, uh, low stakes. I think so. Low stakes. That's the name of today's episode. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm all hopped up on my Duncan midnight roast that we got, uh, with new employees. Isn't that the best? When a Duncan has new employees and you just go up to the counter and you're like, two midnight dark roasts, please. One with one milk and the other one just black. And you get a blank stare back like you're at, like you're going through foreign customs and you're holding a machine gun and a kilo of cocaine. And they're just looking at you like, huh? And I'm like, oh, it's going to be one of those. And that's why Mike ended up with like a big purple drink. Because <laughs> they heard, somehow they heard one midnight roast and one iced purple drink. One a, a purple energy fizz. <laughs> yeah, <that is laughs> Three things I would never order individually, <laughs> let alone together. That's wild that they heard that. It's so funny. <laughs> not only is it wild that they heard that, but it's like uh, the, the blank expression that they gave us back when I said this was wrong. I was like, no, 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 two of these. And then they were like, like, his expression didn't change. If he was an actor, he would have gotten an Oscar for the role of a uh, blank-faced employee. <laughs> for the role of, of uh, about to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because they weren't even busy. Like, no. We were I the only why. ones there. Yeah, we were the only ones there. And yeah. there was, like, one guy in the back. Everyone was, like, running around. It looked like they were trying to clean up a murder in the back. <laughs> and then this one guy's like, hi. And then just blank stared us. <laughs> I like when you show up into a restaurant or something and they look at you and they're like, oh, hey. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt by coming yeah. into the place of business and i worked in service my whole life uh, before i became a comedian but i was just like you see then you're like i i understand karen's a little bit I yeah feel like it's, yeah you get a little older and you're like you're doing your job wrong yeah uh remember the bar halyards when we went in there they had a comedy show but one time we went in there during the day and uh we didn't know if they were open because oh, like the yes, door yes. was open but like it looked it, I wasn't a hundred percent sure it was open or if the front door was only open because they're taking you know deliveries. And we went in at an, like an odd hour. Too. Yeah, we went in at like three, and yeah. I was like, "Well, oh, let's have a beer," you know, because I have uh, I have an alcohol issue. And <laughs> um, uh, we go in, and the bartender looks like he's working, and I'm like, "Excuse me, are you open?" And he's like, "Is the door open?" And I went, "Oh, that's pretty aggressive." And then Emma's like, "Or you said that," and then. Uh, we just left. Yeah, I was like, I'm not staying here. Yeah, and then we just walked out. We're like, oh, if that's how you're gonna do this, we, we, gonna, we don't. I don't. I can suppress my alcoholism for another afternoon. Yeah, you know, there's other bars right next door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry, I entered the exclusive home of alcohol. I, I should have shown more respect. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was kind of a throwback to what I think. Uh, Gowanus, Brooklyn would have been, you know, 30 years ago. If it was the reality, it'd be like, are you guys open? It's like, I don't know. Are you my Adderall dealer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> are you here to give me fentanyl? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way that went. Uh, before we get too into the weeds uh, on illicit substances, uh, let's uh, give homage, pay homage, or talk about our one and only sponsor here at the uh, podcast this week in Zoltan. I don't know why I'm snapping. Uh, but it's the Safe Journal. The Safe Journal is a journal, and it's organized, so you can organize your thoughts instead of just having a messy paper with a bunch of blabberings of a lunatic. 
You're going to have organized feelings of how you feel on certain days, certain dates, certain weather types. And uh, there's all sorts of tools in the front. There's an emotions wheel. There's a big ass uh, couple pages of different emotions. Like if you don't want to, if your vocabulary is small, much like mine, uh, and you want to expound upon the fact that uh, you cry when the sun sets, uh, you can find the word that you want to use in the front part. Uh, that's not the only tool it has. There's a bunch of others. Conversation starters, journal entry starters, and uh, for a limited time only. It's not limited, but uh, <laughs> you can be. get 25% <laughs> off by uh, typing in Zoltan at checkout, and I will write you a handwritten note. And I wrote like seven of them yesterday. Mm-hmm. And it's I'm getting better at my handwriting, and I'm having a lot of weird fun mm-hmm. writing these notes. You're saying a lot of weird things in those notes. I am saying a lot of weird things, a lot of a lot of uh, pin numbers. I'm I'm slowly putting my pin number <laughs> in each note. So if a couple of you get together and you uh, conspire with the notes that I send out, you might be able to decipher my pin number to my one and only bank account. <laughs> So that's fun. That Safe fun. Journal, safejournal.co, .co, .co, Zoltana checkout, 25% off, and a handwritten note. And uh, buy some journals, because we had a rough start to the uh, business this morning. Isn't mm-hmm. that right, Emma? Mm-hmm. What happened? Claudia Smith. Oh, we're giving the names! <laughs> yes! Yes! Suck it, Claudia. Good old Claudia, Claudia Smith ordered three journals in two separate orders and she waited for them to be delivered or to be shipped no 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 she waited for them to be out for delivery okay and then she filed for a chargeback so she asked for a refund after she already knew she was going to get the product Mm -hmm. and you looked up her address which we're not going to give out that might be illegal i won't give out her address join the patreon and where is that (laughs) are we (laughs) Is there a Patreon? <laughs> if you join the Patreon, you can watch me take a dump in a box. We will be mailing to her address. Uh, the not so safe journal. Sh- that is for Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> she lives in a big ass mansion. Ah, yeah, that's the kicker. We looked yeah. up her address. She lives in a big ass house in Vermont. Yeah, Virginia. Virginia? Is in Virginia. Virginia. Not- she lives in a big ass mansion in Virginia, and you know what, Claudia? I've only met two or three Claudias in my life. I've never liked either of them, uh, and you just uh, you made it on the list of Claudias that I don't like. Mm-hmm. You know, Claudia should be the Karen. I've met some nice Karens. I've met some nice I've people named nice Karens. Karens. Too, I've yeah. never met a nice Claudia. Hey, anyone? I don't on know this? a single Claudia. Yeah, I don't I, know. I've uh, yeah. I know a Claude. Maybe that's Claudia. Oh, yeah, that's the French Claudia. Oh. And I've also never met uh, a nice Claude. Well, she's sweet, so I guess I guess I like all Claudia so far. Oh, that's all. Uh, Claude is a woman's name? Claude yes. Van Damme? Isn't that a... That's, that's Jean. Jean Van Damme. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't put the camera on you for that one. So you can pretend that that wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what? you know how there was two Gallagher's? There was probably two Van Damme. That was, his, br- that was his brother. Yeah. He was in Bloodsport too. Yeah. Claude Van Damme was the other Van Damme in the movie Double Impact when there was two of them. To be fair, it's Jean-Claude Van Damme. There we so go. So you didn't I have it wrong, but yeah, it go. wasn't right, you know? I'm hot from embarrassment. Oh, no, don't be. <laughs> so funny. Who cares? That would be great if there was, was abbreviating. A cl- uh, <laughs> I would love to watch a movie starring Claude Claude Van Damme. <laughs> it actually took me until I said it that I was like, oh, wait, that is his second name? Yeah. There we go. I wasn't completely wrong. And I think his full name, because obviously Van, I don't know if you know this, but Van Damme is not his real last name. Mm-hmm. It's like Van Domenberg and Clorgan Dorgan. You know, I don't even know who that is. I just I've heard you say his name so many times. Yeah, I made you. Didn't I make you watch kick? Uh, not kick. I made you watch Kickboxer, where his brother gets paralyzed by Kung Po. I uh, messed up his name. Whoever the villain was in Kickboxer paralyzes his brother in a kickboxing match, and then he trains in the in the mountains of uh, Thailand to go fight. Uh, Kung Po, I think his name's Kung Po. Uh, in remember they fight in the jungle, and he's wearing like a, a little uh, 
like uh, Tarzan leotard, and then they put on gloves, and they put glue with glass in them. Mm. They put the glass, and then he can't fight with the thing, and then he's like, cut him off, and then the girl, My Lee, cuts off the thing, and then for some reason, once these gloves are off, he turns into a badass. It's like it's like because Hulk Hogan. the gloves are off, bud. Yeah, the gloves are <laughs> off. It, it's like Hulk Hogan hulking up at the end after the villain gives him the finisher. He's like, I'm not going to be beat. That's Van Damme. Once these gloves come off, now he can kick higher. He's doing all this stuff. Did you hear my knee pop when I, I threw sure that kick? Did. Tong Po, yeah, yeah. Kung Po. Yeah. Tong Po. Kung. Tong with a T. Tong Po. Like you're scooping, like you're grilling. There you Tong. go. Tong and also, Jean Claude Van Damme's real name? Jean Claude Camille Francois Van Varenberg. Whoa. There you go. I think someone saw that and went, damn. And then he goes, better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he took it. <laughs> Francois. Francois. I would go with Jean Claude Francois. That rhymes better. Yeah. Feels better on the tongue. I liked I liked Van Damme a lot better than uh, Mr. Seagal, Steven Seagal. I uh, you know Dane's dad. We have, uh, I'd rather punch class without gloves <laughs> than like Jean Claude Van Damme or uh, Steven uh, Seagal. Seagal. Well, uh, my good buddy Dane, his dad is a helicopter pilot in San Diego, and so a lot of times, like uh, you know, people will. But, you know, rich people will book like a helicopter ride to wherever the hell. And one time he saw Steven Seagal's name on the manifest. And he's like, whoa, I'm going to give Steven Seagal a ride. And it wasn't. It was just some guy named Steve Siegel. <laughs> 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 and I was like, can you imagine expecting to see big, hefty, dumb Steven Seagal and then just a businessman shows up? <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve Seagal. I'm here for the uh, helicopter ride to Catalina Island. Yeah. I hope you didn't think I was Steven Seagal. <laughs> 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 he, he he presents his hand in a handshake like a karate chop. He's like, Steve Siegel, <laughs> pleased to meet you. Oh, this is a silly episode. Uh, this is the first one we have back ever since we worked together in, uh, we had the best time in Vegas that I've ever had. And it's I've the best time had, you've yeah. ever had. Mike, you don't have to join in. If it wasn't your favorite time in Vegas, then it doesn't have to Third be. time in Vegas ever. First time as an adult with like, you know, reasonable income yes <laughs> and uh had a blast it's so fun it was the true it was truly everything that i wanted in vegas to be it was perfect yeah the right. very high highs a couple low lows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was a party the, uh, but the low lows were comical the low lows were great my yeah. low the low lows were more fun i think because every time it was like a, it was getting bad i would look over to you guys and you were all smiles <laughs> and then you zoltan you were like you were like, I'm having the best time. Yeah. <laughs> As things were going horribly wrong, you were like, this is a lot of fun, guys. Yes, <laughs> I was just really enjoying watching you enjoy the bad stuff. <laughs> I want bad experiences. Like, I don't, like, um, when I think of Vegas, I don't think of sitting at a high rollers table in a tuxedo gambling. And then, you know, like, that's not how I see it. I see it on the low end. Yes. I see it. Uh, I see it like fear and loathing in Las Vegas and in in where you're on the cheap tables and you're there with people with scars and flight mm -hmm. attendants who think they know where everyone's from just by the way they say hello. And and, and that's who I want to be around. And that's why when that redneck. Sh so this is what happened. <laughs> it took us a while to find a table because we wanted yeah. to go to the cheapest table available. Mm -hmm. And originally you tried to teach us craps at uh the aria. venetian or aria, the aria yeah, yeah. yeah that wouldn't stick that wouldn't stick and but i'll yeah. also i'm also a bad teacher no, i found out it's just hard no we're just dumb <laughs> we're also not that great at yeah it. I but mean, also i just really learned how to play so like me it's like I, it's like i took three days of spanish and i'm trying to teach people spanish <laughs> i'm like i don't even know the words here do you know kate sisk great comic no. she has a really funny joke she's like i i taught uh uh preschool spanish and the principal's like oh you can t you you have enough spanish knowledge to teach preschool spanish he goes yeah and so do you <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows how to speak spanish <laughs> rojo means yeah. red hola <laughs> hello is hola yeah. but that's how like I, I have such a rudimentary knowledge so right yeah well i i think the part of craps that confused me the most is that you don't lose for a while yeah where as opposed to roulette you lose every time that ball stops. <laughs> every time that ball yeah. stops, yeah. everyone either has won or lost, yes. and then the tables reset. Yeah. But with craps, it doesn't reset unless a couple things happen. Correct. And that's the part 
learning the thing that could happen to end and finally lose your money, yeah. I think was hard for me to get. Yeah. But yeah. also, and this is the reason I liked going to Old Vegas, because we eventually ended up at the Golden Nugget. I didn't care for the people we were standing at that table with. Like, I liked you. Obviously, I liked you. But then there was like that business. <laughs> she was there too. Yeah, Emma, okay, I love okay. her. I make sure. <laughs> but, <Thank you>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but outside of the three like the three of us yeah it was like that business guy standing next to you yeah in like it was a tough coat. yeah yeah and it, he i didn't like the way he threw the dice like he would it touch him like this and he would do this it was like it, i just didn't care for it that's the thing about uh craps is everyone's got their own little like yeah even me like i like to put like for some reason i just like having two fours like the dice four and four and then i'll throw it okay but everyone's got their own little, little like circle touch throw you know it's all you weren't pretentious about it you, you, in you my looked, head, I was. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, "This is the one, baby." Yeah. Yeah. I would. I, that's actually the only reason I think I'd want to get into craps is I'd like to have an extravagant way of throwing the dice, yeah. like maybe putting both in and then blowing as I throw it. Just <laughs> my first <laughs> night, my first night of the Mirage before the weekend, I was play, I played craps at a ten dollar table, and there was this drunk lady that kept throwing the dice off the table. <laughs> it was the best. Like it was, that, that was like the most fun at craps you can have. <laughs> Packed with people, everyone's drunk, two people smoking cigarettes in your face, and this lady just kept being like, ah, throwing them <laughs> off the table. I was just like, this is this this is the worst and the best night of my entire life. See, I like that. We didn't have we didn't have those characters in front of us at the Aria. Yeah. No, and the no. Aria is very nice. Sure. It felt very safe. I don't want to feel safe. I like <laughs> a sense and you've traveled with me enough. Where do I enjoy the most when we travel? Yeah, when there's you a like sense of the danger. grittiness. I like and grit. I, yeah. And I say it's because you haven't been mugged yet. That's why you like it. Yeah, I mean I haven't. Yeah. Hmm. I like the feeling that a mugging is coming soon. Again, join us on the Patreon. You can mug Zolt. <laughs> once we hit a hundred patrons. <laughs> you stayed you pointed out a creepy guy on the uh on the subway platform today. Mm -hmm. He was wearing, he had long hair, he had a mustache, which I don't like, and then he had a mustache, and he was watching the French news on his phone, and he had a camouflage rain jacket, and he just looked kind of shifty. He is a shifty fella. And uh, you're like, this guy keeps standing near us. Yeah, and he kept looking at us, too. Yeah, he kept looking at us. Side-eyeing us. Yeah, yeah, he gave us a little how do you do, which these days in New York, that's a win. Like, there's women getting bl punched in the face at random. Yeah, yeah. There's people being shoved. There's people being stabbed, shot. So mm -hmm. if there's just a creepy guy who's just giving you one of these, look at him and say thank you. Thank <laughs> you for not doing more, you know? Yeah. But then we walked away from him. Then he came over. Mm -hmm. He came over, and then I remember making eye contact with him. And then he saw me, and then he kept walking and went to this other part. I was just letting him know, I see you. I see you. I hope he doesn't notice that the jacket I was wearing was constricting, so I wouldn't be able to <laughs> fully. I wouldn't be able to turn over my punches. I'd be doing little alligator punches if this thing got heated. Um, but you got a good eye for that. And me, yeah. I like being around a little bit of, a little bit of ick. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. It's fun. You like having the stink on you a little bit. A little. Yeah. Like when that when we finally found a table to play. I don't even remember what the minimum was, but it was the lowest we could find. I think it was five. Five bucks? Five yes. Or, yeah. Yes. Five or ten, but it was... I think it was five. Yeah, maybe it was ten. Yeah, it might have been ten. ten. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we found this table, and people got up, and we sat down. And for a second, it was just the three of us, yeah. which was great. And then the flight attendant showed up. <sighs> this, and as soon as she sat down... She's like, I'm a flight attendant, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I bet spirit. She said spirit. Yep. And I and yep. remember how... how uh, she was defensive because it took me a while, and I'm like, what airline? And she's like, I used to work for Delta. She was very quick to tell me she used to work yeah. for Delta. And then she's like, now I work for Spirit. But you know what? I think Spirit's great. And then she, and I never asked any of this. I didn't even give her a look when she said Spirit. I was like, that's an airline. People got to work. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, uh, and Delta uh, flight attendants aren't allowed to say Delta. If you ask, you're not, they're not allowed, technically allowed to tell you. Oh, really? When they're off the clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found that out when a flight attendant was talking to me at a bar not too long ago. Really? And I asked her what she did, and she said, flight attendant, I go, Delta? She goes, how'd you know? The, I was like, the purple you didn't outfit? Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't tell me. <laughs> She's like, yeah, we're not allowed to tell people. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, it's very Because if they're out drinking and stuff, you know, they don't want people like, I, I don't know, it's a stupid rule. As opposed to, maybe that's why this lady no She's longer like, works for, yeah. <laughs> She no longer works for Delta because she was out there going, <laughs> 
Delta. <laughs> you can't tell people you work for Delta if you're drinking. You can't work for Spirit unless you're drinking. Yes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. spent and dropping yeah. 1300 bucks. Bro. What did she <laughs> lose? Like Thousands? three grand, I yeah. think. Thousands. I, oh, count, yeah. I counted three. You can, but I three. think there was more. She I was don't putting know. at least six hundred bucks every like yeah. five ten minutes. She was losing, and then she just kept, you know. Yeah, and then when she got, she came to our table. She was like, I'm, "I need to win some back." Oh, yeah, that's right. She's, that was her opening statement to the like, table. I to was I need to win back what I've lost? Yeah, yeah. And, and that was not didn't. not like a for the day. That was like I've had a bad trip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this has been a few days of pure hell. Yeah. Yeah. That is, uh, you, you know, because she is a flight attendant, so at least she can get home for free, you know, because <laughs> otherwise you're over there like, man, I need to scrounge up a bus ticket to get the hell out of here. Yeah. Yeah, really. But we had such a fun time because she was a, a big gregarious personality and she was fun, even though she was mad at me because I was playing wrong because uh, like I hit on a 12 but like and everyone had enough number cards that if I would have stayed on 12 uh, the dealer could have busted, busted yeah. and would have because I ended up getting like a king and I busted. But it's five in the morning, dude. I'm, <laughs> what do you want me to count? <laughs> you know, it's not like we're playing this game at 10 at night and I should have my bearings around me. It's five in the morning. <laughs> also, I'm sorry, Spirit, but uh, I didn't know what to hit, but the dealer didn't either. The yeah. dealer <laughs> had no idea what she was doing. She kept counting wrong. She was giving out the wrong money. She gave you more mm. money than she should have at one point. And I was just, shut up, shut up, shut up. Keep your mouth shut <laughs> She was not, she had no idea what she was doing. Yeah. It was pretty great. Yeah, I remember one time I left to go pee and I came back and the table, the mood had changed and the pit boss was over there and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, well, she's like, I won a hand, but she messed up. So now nobody won. Yeah, yeah was, they didn't you, know, you give hit me blackjack. My, oh, I hit go- blackjack and then they, they wouldn't pay me because the dealer made a mistake. She skipped with, a person. She skipped a person by accident. So you shouldn't have gotten the blackjack because that second card should have been someone else's. Oh, yeah, maybe. It would have been mine. And I would have hit blackjack. But I, that's why I was like... Give it to somebody. I was like, give it to... Give, yeah, yeah, like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. this is not our fault. This is the dealer's fault. But Take I guess it if, up with the commission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it up with De Niro. Isn't he in charge of Vegas? No. Imagine if we had a lot of money and we were petty. We'd oh. hire a lawyer and go, and it would be in court. Be like, all right, it's five fifteen in the morning. She got a black <laughs> and then we're trying to make our case, and the judge is like, "Jesus, what dude, you spent ten thousand dollars on a lawyer to win literally thirteen dollars." Thirteen dollars. It's the principle. It's, it's the principle. Yeah. That's the yeah. Uh, but we were having a great time. For a while, like some stoner-looking college kids showed up, and they were great. They didn't they were say a great much. Time. And then they left, and Kenny Powers, without personality, showed up. Yeah, yeah. This dude came out. Of, he had fake teeth. You could tell there were big two chompers. Big fake chompers. You can tell they were stuck in there with some dentine ice. <laughs> and he he and he <laughs> and he came in with a real methy-looking lady. Yes. Methy-looking ladies off to the side somewhere during the evening. She ends up disappearing. I don't know where she went. But uh, as soon as he sat down, the mood at the table changed. That's how – you know when people just have a bad aura mm-hmm. about them? That's what this guy had. He yeah. sat down, and the entire fun-loving exchange we had with these strangers and us was now gone. Even the dealer, whoever the dealer was at the time, we were like, it was fun. And then as soon as he sat down, this black storm cloud came over. <laughs> and everyone could feel it, and I went, yes. <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> and he immediately starts smoking, which you can do in Vegas. You can yeah. smoke indoors. And the flight attendant who's next to him is like, oh, you know, she's doing this. And he's like, what? <laughs> well, yeah, this is Las Vegas, sweetheart. You can, can I get an ashtray? He was just, he was full on Kenny Powers without the charm of, that Kenny Powers had. I would also like to point out he had two Zins in. He yes. had a Zin in each side of his mouth plus a cigarette. Oh, the I guy is full on crazy person. He was on, I think he was on, blo- or maybe that's what it was. I thought he was on cocaine because I was watching his jaw. But well, I, I saw mean, him poking out. I saw oh, the little zins. Okay. from one yeah. zinner to another. I saw it. Yeah. So yeah. he's he's got he's uh, nicotine is coursing through his veins like steroids through the Ultimate Warrior in 1990, <laughs> and and on top of that he's drinking heavy whatever he's drinking and he's smoking, and uh, his entire energy just ruins the table. Yeah. It was really... And slowly arguments start pattering up between mm. him and the flight attendant, Mo- mostly around the smoking. But then he's, like, trying to make up for it by, like, if someone wins, he's like, right? Mm -hmm. And then she leaves him hanging, no high five. And I'm like, oh, 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 (laughs) this is great. This is like a novel I'd read at the airport. (laughs) 
Uh, and then, what did he say that set you off, Mike? He, like, asked a woman to smile He asked something? the flight attendant. He said, he goes, come on, sweetheart, smile more. And yeah. that's, I was like, oh, God. Like, because I was also pretty drunk. Yes. At that point, said, I'm like, I have a very high tolerance for bullshit. I like to sit back and watch. Yes. But, like, at a certain point and a certain level of alcohol, I'm like, no, I'm, I, I can't sit back and just allow this to happen yep. for whatever reason i don't know why i have this like hero complex when i'm like hammered i'm like i gotta stand up for what's right because yeah, you're eight feet tall you That's, gotta go yeah. do stuff it's the only privilege i have yeah, yeah. it's my it's my white it's my white tall privilege i'm like oh, i got it take my glasses off pull my cape out yeah it was. and then you start chirping at him well i turned to you i turned to you guys and i was like bro like i was trying i was like you know Saying just trying to, to say to you yeah. without you know and then he goes he goes, he goes, he's like, hey, what are you, what are you broing? What are you broing? And I was just like, you, man. <laughs> I was like, you. Like, I, I wasn't trying to talk to you, but it's you. You're, you're, and I just started going off, and I'm like, you're coming here, we're having a vibe. You're telling this woman to smile more. Like, what year is it? It's like, yes. just relax, man. I remember that phrase. What year is it? Yeah. And I remember that phrase that you said really stuck with me because I was looking at him. Looking at the smoke in the air, looking at the casino we're at, and I'm like, what year is it? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what year it is. You, know? you thought I was, I was asking you? You yes. showed everyone out, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. What is the yeah, year? Yeah, what is happening? And the best part is right before the fight set off, you were like, we should get out of here. It's 5 in the morning. I'm like, it's not 5 in the morning. And then the argument set off, and I'm like, this feels like 5 in the morning. <laughs> this feels like it. And then the pit boss came by and kicked uh, both you and him out of the table yeah, yeah. and then so we joined out of solidarity and because it's five in the morning imagine <laughs> if we were so itchy on gambling we're like well see you see at you the show later, see you tomorrow bud <laughs> okay you want to meet at the subway in five minutes <laughs> let us clean up well that was here. his second time being told to shut up and yes. they were going to clear him out and then yeah. i guess our fight yeah and i was like well jokes on you nugget you already got my money yeah <laughs> I, I ended up with five dollars <laughs> after oh, winning yeah. at the Aria, winning oh, yeah, at the Nugget. I won like probably four or five hundred bucks over that oh, night, yeah. like over the course of the night, and I it went all went into the, the golden, golden Nugget. nugget. It went yeah. into the yeah, Nugget. The nug I, think that, I, I think that's how old Vegas stays intact: is people go win their money at the Aria. And then they're like, let's start slumming it. And then they go over to Old Vegas. The next thing you know, Nugget's like, yeah, we're open. We're open 24 hours. You want to play $5 black? We'll play buddy. $5 black. Yeah. <laughs> These dealers don't even know the game. <laughs> <laughs> she had no idea. She, you think she can count to 21? <laughs> Bet you she can. And then come on in. And then they slowly siphon your money away. But we're left with the stories. She kept saying, please don't. Like, what does the book say? She'd be like, please don't ask me. Please don't. Because you're going to blame me. <laughs> Because I hate winning. It's like, this poor girl. She she's seems so dealer, sweet, though. though. Yeah, yeah, she's was, very nice. The best. I was yeah. so happy to lose money yeah, at that table. And she would tell me what to do. I'm like, what do the books say? She'd be like, stay. Yeah. Stay. And then she was wrong. <laughs> then, well, <laughs> well, the odds are still in the house's favor. Yeah. So, like, she can tell you the book and go, yeah, you shouldn't hit, but mm -hmm. I could also still win. Yeah. It's just the odds are you shouldn't because you might bust. Yeah. But anyway... The point is, like, I never, the flight attendant was trying to win her money back. I sat down with the idea of I'm never seeing this money again. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just here for the free drinks. Yep. In which uh, you were laughing at me because the drink person would come by and I'd be like, another Michelob Ultra, let's go. And then <laughs> towards the end, I'm like, what are you drinking? Whiskey? <laughs> Whiskey and a Michelob Ultra. <laughs> and you're over here like, why are you, why are you drinking I so much? I just remember looking over and there were four bottles and we'd only sat down for like, 20 minutes yeah, yeah. it's the nugget like, I was, it's, and you know what it is it's my mentality of when i was 21 and we first went to vegas we would sit at the, at the old sahara hotel uh they had one dollar blackjack at the nascar cafe and sure. dane and i would sit there late just like this and we would lose money we never had the intention that we were going to win but you get to drink for free mm -hmm. so it at being on a budget and being broke that was your way of drinking for free mm -hmm. was sitting and playing one dollar blackjack chugging beers and cocktails but now i being it so late and so many drinks in me i went back to 21 year old mentality instead of realizing that michelob ultra is four bucks you can just buy it like you don't have to you don't have to slam them you know but i was like well they're taking my money i gotta get something for it yeah, yeah. two michelob ultras 
whiskey and a coke. What do you want? You want something? Let's get everybody something. Get her, She's let's get her away. some meth. <laughs> <laughs> but also, what are you going to do? It's five o'clock in the morning at the Gold Nugget. Like, do, we doing this sober? Yeah, you <laughs> like, can do it. They got a, a club soda. <laughs> Dude, if, they'll punch you in the face for that. I, if you're sober at five in the morning playing five dollar hand blackjack, That's I think little... they should come by and and. Pin the pamphlet to your shirt. <laughs> like, Staple it to your chest. They're like, here you go. When you're done, take it, this a good read. Take it a good read. Meetings on Saturday. We'll see you then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what a good time. What that a good great. time. Absolute blast. What a and the plus cl- that dinner yes. right beforehand. Yeah, we went to that place. Oh, yeah. What was that? They were a little. They rushed us out of there because we showed up. We showed late. up pretty late. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the food was really good. Food was great. I I just remember they showed up with a little. Uh, pan of nothing but cheese mm. and i ate an entire block of cheese i think mainly by myself <laughs> it was the quesadilla but it was like a deconstructed quesadilla yeah so you had to put it in the tr- uh the tortilla yourself mm-hmm. and i just remember it got to a point probably around the second cocktail where i'm just skipping the tortilla part and just spooning cheese into my face and i was like this is this is a vacation you're very good at eating cheese. I'm like, I might be the best at eating cheese. Mm-hmm. I, I think being Hungarian, I don't know if Hungarians are known for our cheese, but just, I guess, being European, mm-hmm. I can plow through some cheese. Tell you mm-hmm. that. Tell you that for free. I'm trying to figure out the name of the place we went to, but it's I not showing I can text Mark up. and find out, but it was, uh, it was funny because he was in contact it, with, the, with the restaurant because I think our reservations were for 11, mm-hmm. and we got out of the club late show, whatever, goes long and we get over there it's like 11 30 so he was in contact with them like oh we're coming from a show and he mentioned that we were comedians so when we walked in <laughs> when we walked in the hostess who's like this young like 20 year old whatever and she's like oh these are the comedians <laughs> and i could see the disappointment on her face like she just registered like oh yeah not all comedians are matt rife yeah. like you can be not famous <laughs> and yeah. still tell jokes the emphasis was not on comedians which it should be it was on these yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's not, these are the comedians? No, it's, these are the comedians? <laughs> it's really, really one transfer of that, fi- that emphasis really got me right in the gut. <laughs> yeah, she looked very disappointed. <laughs> I, it, I felt like she was like, it was almost like she was talking to, to, she was talking to us with the disappointment of like a sibling who had gone off to get a master's degree and bioscience and then and then we come in i'm like i just told jokes at a place called wise guys and she's like oh you're the comedian and i'm like mm-hmm. you know it just made me second guess every life decision i've ever made it's like oh zoltan i assume that was a fake name yeah for ray romano i don't know i guess i was expecting some brad garrett at least to come in the door no, nobody's take, named Zoltan. I'll take a George Wallace, please. <laughs> Come on, bring in George Wallace. Yeah, it, I remember the disappointment uh, in her eyes, and then we sat down. But I remember the food and the cocktails were really good. Mm-hmm. I was slamming those old. I was fashions. very shocked. You uh, were shocked. I, at I, how I don't good know it was? why. I don't know why. I just because I assume resort like you know that type of mm-hmm. place is just gonna be kind of standard you know bs hotel food but no it was great, it was great. I, I think vegas and I, I don't think this is new either but at least more so in the last 10 years i think vegas is really pushing their food scene mm-hmm. their yeah. food's really good that carver steakhouse we went to it's on that amazing. thursday it was one of the best meals i've ever had yeah. i guess i assume that all because they just leased that space out yeah i assume like in my mind because most resorts are just like the resort owns whatever's in there and right. then they're just cutting costs you know, it's garbage food, but mm-hmm. the Vegas is different. So yeah. it was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. They have a bunch of great, like, I remember when I used to work at the Four Queens, uh, they have the 24 hour subway, which I ate at, but they had a place called Hugo Cellar, which I looked up. It's one of the be- like, one of the top, one of the better steakhouses in Vegas that you can go to. And it's in the old Four Queens, older hotel. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like in a lot of, uh, What's it say, Mike? I know you're looking it up. Hugo yeah, Seller. Hugo Seller, 4.6 stars. Yeah. Four money signs. Four dollar signs. It's expensive. I never ate there. And it is right next to the subway. Yes. <laughs> it's right next to the 24-hour subway with was, the wheelchair elevator lift so you can get up to the thing. It's yeah. four dollar signs. And then if I look at the subway, it's BOGO, 50% off footlongs. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real dichotomy of uh, what's it's going on in Vegas. Sense. So yeah, we could go spend I don't know five hundred bucks on steaks, depending on the amount of people we have at Hugo's Cellar, or you could get a five dollar foot long and take the elevator, mm-hmm. the disabled elevator, up to the top. Or you could get the foot long cookie for dessert. 
Oh, yeah. Have you seen the new items at Subway? Footlong churros? They have Anybody? footlong yeah. churros. They get a footlong cookie. Like, they've completely ditched their whole health kick because of the child touching from old fatty. Uh, <laughs> They're really leaning <laughs> into it. Yeah. That's the name of the documentary. That yeah, they yeah, the child, child touching touch from, from the- fatty. <laughs> <laughs> well, once once they found him, they're like, "All right, we got to lose him." And then I I even stopped eating at Subway for a while because I'm like, I don't I don't I'm not supporting that. But then they got wraps, and I'm like, "All right, you guys to change in your menu. I'll come back in." And I like the wraps. The wraps are good. But now they're like ditched health, and it's like, do you want a foot long meat meatball sub? Do you want a foot long cookie dough raw? <laughs> you know, like is this what is this what uh, Patrick Mahomes is eating? Isn't he the <laughs> They're called sidekicks. Yeah, dude, it's amazing. Which is dish. what it does to, what it does to your gut <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after you eat it. Yeah, your, your sides kick. <laughs> they got a foot long cookie, churro, and they have a foot long pretzel rod. Which is just like hey, that was the other one. What do we why don't we just do stadium food from here on out? <laughs> I remember when I saw it we were in a uh, it might have been in Vegas that I saw it, but we were in an Uber and I looked out the window and the one that caught my eye was the foot long pretzel stick because it looked like a cane. It looked like they were selling wooden canes. And I'm like, what is that? And then they're like, footlong pretzel. And I'm like, whoa. And the next to it, I'm like, footlong cookie. <laughs> Jesus. Just pure. I, maybe that's Subway's game plan to get back to where they used to be, is they're going to get their clientele up to about five or 600 pounds. Then they're going to find their next Jared. They're going to do their background to make sure he's not a pedo. And then they're going to make him the new Jared and go back to the sandwiches they used to make 20 years ago. I think that's their long-term, that's whoever the CEO is. He's like, I got an idea. We make them fat, we find a fat, get them skinny. That's our new Jared. Doesn't touch kids. What if we find one that's just already skinny? Huh? That, they just find one that's already skinny. They're like, you're, 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 okay, fine. Skinny guy, eat the cookie, you're good. Like They, they don't even care about the, the transformation anymore. Skinny guy, eat the cookie, hold up the big jeans. And then, and then. Were those your jeans? No, 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 I just found these. Yeah, yeah. And this is disgusting. <laughs> I'm trying to find the nutrition facts on this. These it has sidekicks, to be 3,000 no calories. Yeah, How what's calories? your guess? 1,500 calories. Yeah, because yeah. like, uh, if I have to take a guess on twelve inches of cookie, I'll say. <laughs> Good lord, two thousand. Two thousand calories. What's your guess, Mike? Oh, well, I'm looking at it, so I, I well, before found you it. Find, oh, you found it. I would have said a thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it says it's the cookie is thirteen hundred and thirty calories we per both, cookie, yeah. which is way too many cookies. Although the churro says 190 calories, I cannot believe I that believe to be that. true. 190. There's no way. No. Maybe there's like. Ten servings, and it's each serving. Oh, yeah. It's, it's got to be per servings. serving. Yeah. Yeah. How many links of the churro did you eat? The whole thing. Yeah, that's crazy. Don't tell me per serving. That's kind of like we went to that salad place in our neighborhood, mm-hmm. and they're like, this is only 500 calories, but you know what 500 calories feels like in your stomach because we've looked at nutrition facts long enough. Mm-hmm. And when I'm done eating that salad that was filled with hummus and quinoa and chicken, and I'm like, that was 1,000 calories. <laughs> All right, I'm as full as I just ate 1,000 calories. <laughs> Quit lying. Yeah. You know? It's leaves. <laughs> that's it's their leaves. argument. I was having salads this week, and but I also made a bunch of like roast beef. Mm. Like I s- slow cooked a bunch of beef, and I was just like mm. piling it into the salad. <laughs> and I get done eating, I'm like, oh my god, why do I feel bad? I'm like, <laughs> oh, you just ate to a side of beef with your lettuce, you idiot. <laughs> you ate a deconstructed foot long <laughs> yeah. that you could have gotten at Subway with roast beef. Yeah, and I could have. So mm. stupid. Oh, uh, that's funny. Sounds good though. That it does sound good. good. It was very, very I know. Good. So, no. They mislabeled a, a, a pork tenderloin as pork fat, so I got a whole pork tenderloin for a dollar ninety. Whoa! So I cooked Whoa. that up too. What grocery Again, store? Why do I feel so bad? <laughs> 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 I knocked out a whole pork tenderloin in three days. <laughs> this salad's really getting to me. That's we what do, it is. We do that with loaves of bread that we get at Winners. Uh-huh. Winners is like a local place. That's where the I got hit on on next door by that gay dude. Oh. Where I was like, what's a good place to get bread? And this guy wrote Winners. Tell me when you're going. I'll meet you there. I'll bring the I'll bring the mustard or I'll something. I'll bake your loaf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, and then I looked at my profile picture and I looked kind of gay in my profile picture so I see where he got there. Um, but then we ended up going to Winners and we got a loaf of uh, sourdough with like a, they put a cheese in the middle. Mm-hmm. They just put a rod of cheese sure. through the middle, black pepper, and we loved it. And I think a loaf of bread between two people should last a week. 
Two days. Yeah. Two days. We were every every free moment. Like, I'd come out of the bathroom. Emma would be over there. <laughs> <laughs> she'd cut that thing. She'd come back from, like, taking the laundry down. I'd be over there like, oh, you want to you drill this bread some more? And, and we polished that thing off so fast. Yeah. You can't have cheese bread oh. laying around the house. Oh, it's so it's good. It's so good. Yeah. But you know what? Good bread, and I, I'm assuming it's it's better made bread than what you get at the grocery store because these high dollar hipsters baked it, and uh, it does give you more energy. Because like I I ate a bunch of that bread, and I remember I went for a run, and I hadn't run in a while, and I ran more than I usually did, like do, and I was like, is that because of all that bread I've been eating? Yeah. It's just it's like no full sh- of energy, not a sh- no sugars and stuff. Right, it's crazy mm-hmm. what they do to bread. Yeah. <sighs> American but bread, huh? American bread. American bread filled with French fries and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? <laughs> gravy. You know what's good with this bread? Gravy. <laughs> Just everything's good with gravy. What? Well, I mean, that's what biscuits and gravy is. Oh, it's like, like oh, you want you want some biscuits? How about some thick, fatty white gravy? Smat. It, it's delicious. I make a great biscuit gravy. You make it yourself. Uh, let's see. It's just it's just bacon fat and flour. Oh. That's all it really is. You're just making a roux, and then you put some cream in it. And I'm you getting so hungry. <laughs> you eat would it you backwards. like to have us over for dinner? <laughs> yeah, would, yeah, absolutely. It's a breakfast item, but we'll eat it anytime. Yeah. <laughs> anytime. We should come up to the camper this year. Do some, do some grilling, some smoking. Oh, man. I just want to get into my zone. You guys have like, a camper? We have an RV upstate. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. Do go in the summer's. That sounds a little cool. chalet, a little summer house. A little Very chalet. Cool. We have a nice little uh, camper, big deck. Ooh. I have a smoker, grill. Wow. I'm getting a pizza oven this year. Wow. It's going to be a party, dude. Yeah. We're coming. I love how camping in America has just turned into, I cook out there. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> it's my cooking. It's like some people have a, a hunting cabin. I have a cooking cabin. Yeah. That's where I go to cook meat. That's I want to so cool. be able to cook in a place that doesn't stink up my apartment. Sure. So I got a deck and an RV out yeah, in the woods. That's basically what it is. And I yeah. stink up the woods with my slow cooker. Yeah. And I, I, I built a little outdoor shade shower so when it gets to be like 100 degrees I just lay out and just get doused with water for the entire day wow. it's the best my beer is just outside the water so I can do, it's it's incredible that sounds so cool yeah we have that's, a boat it's a it's a blast you guys have a boat too yeah hell yeah it's not a great boat <laughs> don't get it twisted <laughs> it's a friend's boat that we ended up getting that's, I think you know who this guy is this is East Coast Dane yeah this is uh, sure. yeah my my best buddy dane out and he has all these things you talk about oh, he yeah? has an rv he has a, a van he has a boat but all these things are like when you were like it's not a nice boat it's a it floats it she's seaworthy but we're <laughs> that's not, what we have yeah, yeah it's not a yacht <laughs> no no no. that's no. who yeah you're you're east coast dane it's like an 89 mm-hmm. ski boat yeah. There's a bar across the river that's just com- full of rednecks every yes. night. Yes. It's amazing. And they're, the same. and they're the same size. They're too. the same. They're giants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're both on our uh, health journey. <laughs> Is that what you meant to say? <laughs> I don't mean weight. I mean yeah. height. Oh, yeah, okay. you guys are yeah. both tall. <laughs> We First do, a, all, we do, a, we do I, shows up there. We do a month a monthly at this great brewery. We ooh, should just come up and do I it. Spend the weekend. It'll be awesome. I don't. Yeah. My August is wide open except for one weekend in Philly. Great. So I mean, this isn't going to be a money weekend. It's going to no, be a split yeah. the door vacation, vacation yeah, weekend. Yeah, would love weekend. to. Yeah, yeah that'd be that'd awesome. That'd be so fun. Yeah, I love. That's Let's like try when. To plan it. Yeah, that's like when Dane and all of us for his bachelor party went out to Parker, Arizona, and it's just it's Arizona rednecks. So like they just came back from the capital. <laughs> and uh, and and you could feel it, and it was it was fun to be around characters, you know, yeah. a little dangerous. Covered in red. What is that face paint? Yes. <laughs> yes. So ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just talking about catalytic converters and how we took them off. No, no, no it was all Antifa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we had uh, Matt. We are definitely doing that. Um, how are we doing on time? On the forty-two. Uh, Forty-two, cool. forty-two. Because there was, that was quick. I had a couple other. Uh, we went to Naples this past week. Oh, we were down uh, off in the Florida. hook, off the hook comedy yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. Captain Brian, yeah, 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 the owner. Nice place. Mm-hmm. They, they. It's even better now because they moved the bar. The bar used to be in the showroom, and they moved it. Yeah, uh, and now it's in the back, so it's better. And uh, um, it's in. It's it's a lot of Florida, like where the club's in a weird place. It's next to the grocery store. It's next to a Publix in the shopping oh, center. Man. 
we show up the first night, most Florida thing ever. There's a Ferrari, red, ruby red Ferrari parked right in front of the club, uh, handicap placard sure. right off the mirror. And I'm like, that should be the Florida <laughs> State flag. Yeah. Just a ruby red with like the oldest man ever coming out of it <laughs> with primo parking. But it's just hand, hand uh, accelerator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know those like you know those uh, lifts they have downstairs where they get to sit. <laughs> That's what came out of the car. He's like it just popped him up like he was going to the second level of the subway in Vegas, and it just popped him right up. It's just a head with legs <laughs> driving a <laughs> driving a Ferrari. How did you push the? Don't ask questions, man. Dude, that, Naples and I said this to them on stage. Naples, Florida, especially this time of year, it's a mixture of of well of retirees that live there year round. Uh, there's tourists coming in, snowbirders coming in from Canada, a lot of Canadians, a lot of people from Michigan, Ohio, and then just this like rich subsect of people that it feels like the settlement money just came in. Like these aren't people that started a business and then it went well. These are people that found a way to sue the government yes. through a company that they kind of didn't, had no intention of opening. <laughs> and then they just got this big, it's this I, I told it to them on stage, and they were deeply offended by how I described it. Uh, but as they didn't understand. Yeah, I, I think they understood what I was saying. Like, every time I poked fun at, at, at money a little bit, they're like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not saying you guys aren't rich. You're rich, but there's, like, obviously no class involved with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you guys have, like, you're, you're like, you're like a white trash guy that won the lotto. Like, there's a lot of bad tans and It's non-pretentious cards. money, but somehow in a bad way. Yeah. <laughs> you figured out how to do that full circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're you're the kind of rich where in the movie you're like, oh, that's the villain. Yeah. 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 You're like, that's the greasy villain. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I love I love poking fun of Florida. I remember uh, someone told me a fan of mine sat in the back and this guy was laughing in the beginning until I said this one line. Because I was like, I love Florida because you guys can do whatever you want here. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you want. The comedy club can be next to the grocery store. There's no rules. Your dumb house can be super tall even if it's yeah. right on the water. Exactly. You know, uh, but you can't smoke weed. There's no weed allowed, and uh, you won't let drag queens read. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, so you guys have these weird sticking points on rules where, like, our drag queens need to be illiterate, and, uh, <laughs> and weed is not legal, and... Uh, I could feel from the audience, like, ha, ha, ha. And then once I hit the drag queen line, <laughs> and, and, and the, the fan of mine said, yeah, there's this guy next to me, this older guy, and he laughed at everything. But once he said the drag queen line, he didn't laugh again for the rest of the show. Like, it was out of protest. Can you imagine? And, and I, this guy's yeah. not the only one. Every, a lot of people are like this in this day and age. But when you put your own joy of entertainment behind your political and social views, like, that's how much, those are, like, the people that are, like, God, country, my dog, and then my wife. Like, those are, <laughs> like, like, those are the people. I will, like, I'll watch someone who I know for a fact I don't vote the same as. I could put on a Kid Rock song right now and go, I am American Badass. <laughs> Do the whole thing. I love Kid Rock. I know me and that guy don't vote the same on dick. Yeah. Like, nothing do we vote the same on. No. I would never let my political or social views get in the way of my good time. You know? But this guy was ha, 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 drag queens and reading. <laughs> and they shouldn't read. <laughs> and I did that in my... <laughs> he just got mad at you because of the sentiment, not yeah. even because you just mentioned it, because he just really doesn't like them reading. He really doesn't like them reading. And it's... I just imagine him... Because I said that in my first five minutes. That meant he was having four minutes... Of 59 time. seconds of a good time. And then he had, I did an hour. So then he had the next 55 minutes of just pure hell. Just like doing like a game show of <laughs> try not to laugh. And uh, I don't know. And I, I, I don't know. Well, it was reading to kids. That's what they're doing down there. But it's like, do they not get it? Like we're trying to get. First of all, I don't think it was mandatory. Was it mandatory? Like no, were these kids you could get any any kid can get out of anything in school with a note. Yeah, you don't have to go do sex ed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, if you don't want to. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a bunch of people that don't know how wieners work. I don't want like, other kids seeing it. Yeah, it's, I'm uh, the parent for everybody. I don't know why they're all from Georgia. <laughs> I, you know, because <laughs> yeah. they are. Yes, they no, are. they're not. <laughs> but but it's uh, I wanted to say on stage, but I don't think I had the courage. I was like, you know, with the the, the I, I think they just wanted the drag queens to read to the kids so they can get them young so that when they grow up they don't become bigots like you guys yeah. you know like that and i think if i said it with that smile like bigots like you guys <laughs> I, I think they would have been like ah 
Oh, we didn't know that. <laughs> okay, uh, bigots like us. Can I, do you want me to be one too for this bit? All right. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I remember hearing that, and I was like, good, good, because I'm not an. I don't. I know there's a lot of. We live in an era of edgy comedy. Where like people are like, yeah, I want to walk half the room. I don't want to walk any of the room, but I still want to get my little nuggets in there. Sure, you know, I want to slip in my little how do you do's into <laughs> your, you know, ha, 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 what are we talking about butter? Let me talk about capitalism. <laughs> and then, but I, I slip it in with a little truffle joke, and you guys are like, ah, I think I get what he's talking about. Yeah, you know? uh, well, some people don't. Some people don't, but we. Uh, uh, that was but he didn't get a refund. No, 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 no refunds. No refund. There's no back. refunds in Florida. There's no chargebacks. <laughs> Claudia, you damn. I'm writing you a hard, strong worded letter and going, let you know you screwed uh, the small business out of $160. Is that how much you lost? Give or take, yeah. Give or take. Maybe Is there no uh, no refund policy? What What do you mean? Like it's it's a chargeback, so I don't, I don't think I can do anything about it. It's the yeah. credit card. With the company, yeah, but you can you can push back. You can say no. I sent it. Here's the here's the receipt of delivery. Oh, yeah, I, I did. Oh, so okay, we'll okay. see. Oh, usually okay. the customer wins, but I don't know. She's been in business long enough to know that the customer yeah. usually wins in these yeah. disputes, but not always. One time mm-hmm. I ordered. Uh, you know how there's like those fake companies that pop up on Amazon, mm-hmm. like right before the pandemic. Remember when they used to make those athletic looking joggers where they're super skinny on your calves, yes, and then they just show it on a buff guy. You ever have those moments, you're like two beers in, you look at the ad, and you're like, if I wore those pants, I think I'd look like that man. <laughs> and so I ordered these pants from a company that was just a bunch of letters, and uh, it never showed up. Cool. Uh, yeah, and I sent emails, and they're like, oh, uh, and then eventually the company went out of business, and they kept my 50 bucks, and I never got my mm-hmm. my beefcake sweatpants. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so It said beefcake, but across the crotch yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of the butt. Yeah, the beefcake <laughs> Didn't sweatpants. that happen to Brandon with the, I don't remember what the company company was called but it was like an invisalign type of company where they oh yeah they, they went out of business smile direct club went out of business he was halfway yeah. through his <laughs> his teeth molding or whatever you call it and they send you new molds every month or so yeah to yes. wear and yeah. then they just stop sending it because they went out of business <laughs> That's amazing. I don't know why that's so funny. To me. It's just someone with a jacked up smile, and then they're like, "We're out of business." And I'm like, "But, but I'm uh, all my stuff's still crossed." And they're like, "Yeah, but is it worse?" And they're like, "Kinda." Yeah. I, I need. You. I thought you guys were combing it one way to get it to go the other way eventually. Do you know why they went out of business? I'm pretty sure it's because they didn't. They had, there was no dentists involved. Yeah. There was like no medical Maybe. theory behind it, and they were like people's teeth were falling out of their head. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. People just lose like just like spitting out teeth with on Smile Direct Club. <laughs> I could be honest with you, dude. If you get the original box for Smile Direct Club, and you're just over there putting your teeth in putty, and there's no one with a lab coat on, and you're just over there boiling it in your own kitchen, and you think that it's eventually going to work out, I think it's on you. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, sometimes you got to go into an office. Sometimes there needs to be a receptionist. It's kind of like when we bought weed in Portugal, and they're like, THC is illegal here, so we have HHC. And yeah. I went, uh, I've never heard of that, and I don't want to smoke like that. Delta no. 9 or Delta something. Delta 9, yeah. and then we looked it up when we came back, and, and they're like- it's supposed to be really bad. <laughs> yeah, it causes your butthole to fall out or whatever. My and, sister took some Delta 9, and the cops had to come because she had such a panic attack. Oh. The cops, firefighters, the ambulance, because she thought she was dying. Yeah, it's supposed to cause like psychosis or yeah, something. No, it's oh what my, yeah. But she did it in front of her children. So <laughs> at least there's some permanent trauma to, for them. I was on the phone with her. I was like, yo, can you just put the kids away? And she's like, they're fine. I go, not for long. <laughs> they might be right now. But this is going to come back. I think when they put the spit bag over your head because you're <laughs> spitting at the cops, they might that might be in a therapy session in the morning. Uh, I think it's going to be a oh, problem. Oh, my goodness. That is <laughs> yeah. comedy. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> Smile Direct Club went out and screwed everybody over. Yeah, they're yeah. toast, buddy. But you know who's not going to screw you over? Safe Journal. SafeJournal.co because... Me and this young lady. She's running the business, but I drag a lot of the packages to the post office. And then she makes sure that they go into the bottom of the bag. <laughs> like, it's one of the things I poke fun at it because we show up with, they're all labeled. And then there's just a big bin you can throw them into. It's a big open bin. Sure. A lot of people have like clothing returns and other packages. How do you do? And then she'll spend like a good 30 to 60 seconds making sure that her stuff's in the bottom. And then she'll put other stuff over it. And I'm like, what are we doing? She goes, I don't want anyone to steal it. 
<laughs> you know how when you go to the grocery store, you grab the stuff in the back, like the milk in the back, and it's, she does it's, this. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things. You know, I just yeah. want to make sure it's in the bottom, safe, safe. Yeah. So, but my point is, that's the level of white glove treatment that you get here at Safe <laughs> Journal. Yeah. Not only are we shipping it ourselves, not only am I handwriting notes, not only are we dragging it to the post office, we make sure that it goes to the bottom of the bin to make sure no one swipes it, make sure it gets to you, unless your name's Claudia and you screwed us over <laughs> for three damn journals and $160 while you're living in your highfalutin pooping in tall cotton mansion in virginia or vermont she can't remember but the point is you will get a hard strong worded letter from me i'll tell you and there might be it might be signed in a brown smear which i uh, which i hope you don't do dna testing on just finger paint something something, something. That's very similar i think your question should be is a dog or human i live near a park it could be anything so uh, i live near a park and our plumbing's bad so your call bud who knows? <laughs> you tell me how you want it done. What's it taste like? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, but the other thing we did, <laughs> this is the one thing I wanted to get out before we left, because uh, we went to Naples, and we had such a great time down there. And we got to tour a wolf sanctuary in, uh, in Naples called the Shy Wolf Sanctuary. So big shout out to them. Go check them out if you're in Naples. Uh, we had a wonderful time. We got to see all these wolves, which I don't know why that word is hard for me to say, but wo- wolves. I want to say wolves, but it's wolves. Is it? Is it? I think there's an L there that you got to hit, and no, there's, there's definitely a v a v. right after it. Wo- it's not wolves. Wolf Blitzer. Wolves. Wolf Blitzer. Uh, but we went over there, and it's a sanctuary, and all these very nice women work at it. And uh, my favorite part of it is like while you're looking at these amazingly adorable animals and you're like into them they tell you their horrific backstory that they have memorized for each one sure and you're like yeah this uh over here this one's a 65 percent gray wolf it's a hybrid and i'm like oh wow and like, yeah uh he came to our shelter because he was in an underground uh, wolf fighting league 38 and 2 but after his second loss they tied uh <laughs> cinder blocks to his paws and threw him in the lake thankfully a lot of people don't know this wolves have uh, webbed toes so he was able to swim through the cinder blocks and made it to shore and ended up here at the Shy Wolf Sanctuary. Over here, we have a spotted fox. This one uh, survived uh, 9-11, Tower 2. Uh, came all the way down. Uh, and then saved by Rudy Giuliani. But then he was trapped in the Trump campaign for five years and eventually made it here to our wolf. Like, every one of them had a horrific story. I like that the wolf, had. they knew the record. Like, they found out. Like, it was tattooed on the, on the wolf. <laughs> It was. It, they knew the bad thing of every animal that happened there, and they, and it, I think they because and it comes from a place of love. Like they love the animals so sure. much that they know their entire backstory. They know, uh, which is great. So these animals are in great hands. Mm-hmm. But it was just it was funny how much they knew. I remember at the end, I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna go to Duncan after this." And one of the ladies is like, "Don't go to Duncan. I had a sandwich there once. Spent thirteen days in the ICU." <laughs> and you were like. All right. <laughs> well, we've already eaten there like five times this week, so I, I and I don't have health insurance, so this could go real south. But I'm still I, gonna go. Yeah, I'm still gonna go. We went right after. <laughs> yeah, we went right. We went today before we came, yeah. and that guy blankly stared at us and gave us a red drink. You know, I don't want to drink that drink now. I don't want it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good. I saw him shaking it. Sure. Oh, it yeah. was shaken? Yeah. Well, then it must be safe. Shaken. <laughs> shaken. It sounds like what's going to happen to you after you drink it. It's a, the red burst fizz. <laughs> That's what's going to happen to my tummy. He was muttering something about Delta 9, but sure. I wasn't listening. It wasn't my native tongue, whatever he was saying. Uh, so we, we got to where we were getting. What happened Wonderful. there? That safe journal was not at the bottom of the barrel, I'll tell you that. No. <laughs> Safe Journal. Safe in multiple ways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Safejournal.co. Look, it just fell a good 28 inches and still, uh, intact. still intact. Do you need to write secretly about how your podcast studio might be haunted? Safe Journals. Is it haunted in here? Well, it just came off the table. Oh, I kicked the table. I was doing a boot. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just right. trying to do a bit, but <laughs> you, got, you got scared of ghosts for a second? <laughs> are, are we haunted here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> We've had ghost experiences. I got molested by a ghost in Tucson the hotel congress touched my wiener sure 
Yeah, that's what I told my ex too. When uh, she, <laughs> she was, was right like, next what, to me. "What are these videos of?" I was like, "No, no, it was a ghost." <laughs> Sorry, she was very pale. I don't know what to tell you. No, this is a male. This ghost. is a real thing. A I male can feel ghost? with the the strength of the hands and how he turned. And sure, I think that's why I didn't like the way that guy threw the dice at the aria. <laughs> reminded you because it reminded me of triggering. how that guy came in because he came in the ghost hand came in. Lifted, turned, lifted, turned, and that's what the guy was doing with the dice. And I think I now, two weeks later, I've now pieced together why I didn't like that guy. That's how I was molested by wow. a ghost at Hotel Congress in Tucson. Ghost, Ghosty Weinstein? Ghosty Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> Billy the Grabby Kid. <laughs> I, th- I think Billy the Kid was busted there. Or was, no, it was a mobster. P. Ghosty? We are going to have some fun. <laughs> ghost Diddy? Have you ever been molested by a ghost? Man, I wish. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good time, I guess. No, I don't think I have. No. I ended up with a good joke about it, so that's, that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah, that's all that matters. But uh, I think that's the episode for this week. How much time are we at? We're right there in an hour. An hour, perfect. 60 minutes of a good time, good giggles, and how do you do's? Uh, why don't you get yourself a safe journal, safejournal.co. Go to my website, ZoltanComedy.com. Come see me live. Check out Mike Albanese. What's your website? Inmyownhead.com. Inmyownhead.com. Uh, check out Mike, safejournal.co for that. ZoltanComedy.com for me. That's it. Cheers, everybody. Trekking heavier, traveling light. There's one thing that's right wherever I go. That's where I am.